on the channel this morning. South African hostage Stephen McGowan has been released six years after being abducted by Islamist militants. McGowan was taken hostage in 2011 from a hotel in Timbuktu in Mali. Well, let's get the very latest uh, on the story now on the line to us. Gift of the Giver's founder, Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman. Dr. Suleiman, an incredible moment for South Africa. Hey, it's been great, but more than an incredible moment for South Africa, it's a great day for the family of Stephen McGowan. I mean, the family, unfortunately, the mother, Beverly McGowan, is not around to see her son, nor the son, nor can the son see his mother. It's two months, you know, if had, this had been done two months earlier, it would have been even, an even greater day. But you know, things, they take their course. But it's a great day, really, for Malcolm McGowan. I've seen the man almost every week. I've seen the suffering, and I've seen the suffering of Captain McGowan. I'm really, really happy for that. It really is just so very heartbreaking, though. As you say, Dr. Suleiman, just missed by two months the passing of his mother. It'll be a bittersweet reunion with the family. Yes, you know, I mean, I mean, Beverly, every time I spoke to her, 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 her wish, her last wish before death was to see Stephen. And Stephen comes back now and will find his mother is not around. Really, it's very, very tough for them. It's going to be time for them, of course, to bond. The fact that he's got his father, the father was looking forward to have his son. Catherine was looking forward to have her husband. They were really looking forward to that. But in that, as you said, it's going to be bittersweet. It's going to be sad that the mother is not around. And the mother really deteriorated in the last four or five months of this year. Dr. Suleiman, would Stephen McGowan have been told of the passing of his mother? Well, probably not immediately. You know, you don't take a hostage out of a traumatic situation and give him more trauma straight away. So they probably broke it to him at home when he, he got close to home and he wants to see his mother. And then, of course, the mother is not here. But what Malcolm did, he did a very good thing. During the time of the memorial service and the funeral, they video recorded the entire ceremony. And he said, when Stephen comes out, and, you know, we were very positive that it was going to happen soon after Gustafsson came out, that he will show the video to Stephen. So Stephen will get some closure on the fact that his mother has passed on. So the whole ceremony has been recorded for him. Dr. Suleiman, as you say, Johan Gustafsson, who was abducted with him back in 2011, he was released in June this year. Take us through uh, what was going on in the background since then uh, and in the run-up to Stephen being released last Saturday. Look, it, 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 nothing had changed from the time that Johan got... We were just carrying on with the same process all the time. We were in contact with the negotiators, or what I mean with the intermediaries, we were in contact through them with the Mali uh, state security. We were in contact with the uh, Al-Qaeda because um, governments don't talk to terrorists. And we had to do it through an intermediary. And we kept on pressurizing them to, to release Stephen. And then eventually, of course, I was in touch with government. We meet all the time. Uh, I was in touch more with state security over this last two years and at, in, in between with Dirko. And the final part, of course, government had to go and, and make the arrangements themselves. Because as an NGO, we can't do the final negotiations. It involves the Mali government, it involves the Mali military, it involves the Mali state security, it involves getting passports or documentation, it involves a private plane. All those phases are done by government, as in the case of Johan Gustafsson. But we were involved in the passage right after the final stage. Dr. Suleiman, what do we know of Stephen's treatment while he was being held hostage? Extremely well treated. That has come from, you know, first of all, even if anybody didn't tell us that, we know how Al-Qaeda operates. We have that experience from the Kokis in, in Yemen, and of course from uh, hostages being held by Al-Qaeda in many parts of the world, and international media specialists who, who specialize in Al-Qaeda. But of course, we had our own practical experience. And it came from the hostages now directly. Yuan Yulani was well looked after, but on the 7th of March this year, Jacques, the other Dutch hostage, was found by accident in inverted commas by the French in Mali and was released. He came and seen us in South Africa. And he said, had, except for the part that he was a captive, he had a very great life. That Mali is very beautiful. The desert is lovely. They played in the pools. They got the best of stuff. Wherever Al-Qaeda lived, they lived. Whatever they ate, you know, Al-Qaeda ate, they ate. In, in every way, they, they had a very great life. And he said when stuff came from the market, they were given the first option to take whatever they want. And then when Johan Gustafsson came, after his release on the 26th of June, on the 3rd of July, he also came to see us. And he came to say, you know, thank you for everything that you guys have done. We know you were involved. With Al-Qaeda told us, a South African agency was involved. 
We saw your logo. We saw everything about you. And we were very well looked after. He said, you know, and, and, and I asked him now, you are out, but how is Stephen? So he said, look, when I left last week, Stephen was in very good condition. So, Dr. Suleiman, from every, everything you're telling us and just how well they, they were treated while they were being held hostage, what is the aim then of taking these people hostage? How would you look after gold and diamonds? The hostages are a commodity, a trading commodity. If the commodity dies, your business is bankrupt. So you've got to make sure that your commodity is very well looked after. In the case of Al-Qaeda, it's a business. So they have to make sure they look after you. It may not be in terms of money. They may get something else in return. But they have to take good care of you. Otherwise, nobody will do business with them. They need one. It's like any business. We have one negative story. Nobody will trust you. Nobody will deal with you anymore. And they've got no chance of making a business. So it's a business deal. You know, whether they release somebody from prison or they get some kind of other agreement or somebody puts some pressure on them. But by far and large, if you don't have the hostage in your hand in good condition, you can't make a deal. So aside from his, his, his physical well-being, which from your description would most likely be uh, okay, uh, talk to us about his emotional well-being during the past six years. Well, that one, you know, well, let me put it this way. I would have thought it would be a total disaster if I, you know, I would, I would, I would assume it's going to be like that. Of course, Yolandi came out quite strong. And now if I analyze it backwards, it all depends on the strength of the person in, in, caught up in the captive situation. Pierre Corky was a very strong man. I'm going back, I'm just giving, I'm bringing an inference. Pierre Corky was a very strong man, and between him and Yolani, they held it together because they were together. In Stephen's case, Stephen, Jacques, and uh, Johan were together. Jacques got freed in 2015, and Stephen and Johan were together. And I would have thought at that point, after so many years in captivity, they would be affected. But Johan came out in an extremely good state of mind, and he looked very calm very relaxed and it seemed to me that they supported each other very well and they had a very strong state of mind and i think because they were well looked after maybe that helped to a large extent to keep them in a very good state of mind emotionally dr suleiman before we let you go you know uh, the international relations minister has asked that uh, south africans give uh, stephen mcgowan and his family now the space to just come to terms with everything that's happened uh, what would be your advice to the family on exactly how to do that, how to continue with life, how to rebuild your life? From previous hostage situations, it, it takes them a long time to reintegrate in society. Jacques told me he found it more hard being released than being inside with Al-Qaeda. He just couldn't integrate into society. This is going to be a problem. You know, how to relate to your family, but again, I said, it depends on the state of mind of the different individuals and the kind of family support they get and the kind of support they get from friends. It's going to take a long time, but there's a lot of love waiting for Stephen from his father, from his wife, five wife, his friends and family. But we have to respect what the international relations minister said. They need their space. When they're ready to make the move, we wait for them to make the move. We don't impose on that space of theirs. Well, we certainly wish him and his family all the very best. Uh, on the line to us there, Gift of the Givers founder, Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman. Dr. Suleiman, thanks so much for your time on ENCA this morning. South African hostage Stephen McGowan has been released. That is your breaking news story on the channel. Six years after being abducted uh, in Timbuktu, he is now back on home soil. He is back in South Africa. More news for